Welcome, Wine Yaks, Wisdom Wanderers, to another edition of Wine and Wisdom. I like the old world font. <laughs> the old world. I forget what that font's called, but yeah, it's old world. As you can see, I'm joined by my brother from another, D. Greasy of Roku Saki Green, or what is it now, D. Greasy something, something uh, we, Yeah, I change it like every six months, yeah, just to you. throw off the hater. <laughs> Keep people off the scent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I feel nice. like talking like old world with those words in the back. Fetch me yeast and wine, my young loin, as you sit there and play your game. Oh, f- fair maiden. <laughs> fetch me, <laughs> fetch me my stirrups and gauntlets, please. Sword boy. <laughs> yeah, we should do a whole podcast just we, on. Uh, we should. We talk oh, about nice. many have traveled far and wide to taste me Lord's mead. <laughs> <laughs> Finest mead in all the kingdom, dare I say. I remember the first time uh, we watched that uh, Beowulf, me and my bro oh, Jordan, yeah. and she said that it didn't. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna keep it appropriate, right? But <laughs> we thought she said something else. Oh yeah, and we laughed for like 15 minutes straight in the movie theater. Yeah, it was some people behind us laughing because <laughs> they just we wouldn't stop laughing. Beowulf and Grendel. <laughs> and Grendel. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so yes, this is Deron Green. My, we go way back. We go back to the OG podcast, yes. Flicks That Kick. And it was just is, me and this guy. That's right, which was in 2015. It's still yeah. kicking around. 62 episodes we did. We yeah. talked about action movies. And we may bring it back at some point. We'll we see. Need to. We need to. We'll see. To. This has been more fun for me because I get to drink booze. <laughs> 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 right? So we I'm did drinking. that at Flicks That Kick. What's that? We did. We, we this did. is this is true. This is true. And Darth's uh, White Claw, our unofficial <laughs> sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> White Claw, that's right. But anyways, uh, if this is your first time checking our show out. We drink wine. We talk about life. life. The whole premise of this show is to get to know somebody in a deeper level. And this would be different because I mean I know this cat yeah. really really deep. We go we go back many many moons. And I know yes. you. I know you really well. But hell, man, I might get to know you on another level. That's the whole point of this, and to glean some wisdom <laughs> from these guests. So, yeah. Without further ado, ado, we're gonna have some. I know it's a retread. It's oak leaf. Listen, times are tight, money's tight, so we're hitting the we're hitting the four dollar bottle of the finest Merlot. <laughs> Medium. In all of the valley. <laughs> Tis a medium-bodied... <laughs> Tis a medium-bodied Merlot with a captivating nose of blackberries and plum and a satisfying smooth finish. Smooth finish. I've been watching a lot of Kitchen Nightmares. My niece got me on that show. My so. son got me on so, that. So uh, that may be dropping in out of a Gordon Ramsay a little bit. Hey, you know. I think Somebody he... needs to get a <laughs> fucking grit. I think he likes watching Kitchen Nightmares for the simple fact that Gordon punks a lot of people. Oh, yeah. punks and a lot of kitchens are just he, disgusting, man. It's like, gross. It I've is, been it, food poisoned twice, man. And uh, like, uh, yeah, you don't I ain't going for that. a third time, yeah. man. That might take yeah. me out of here, man. It was funny. He was like, I guess you could call this fat shaming. He was ripping on this dude. For, <laughs> he's like, he goes, mate, when's the last time you've been to a bloody gym? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> his belt, you know, gut was hanging all over his belt and stuff. Let me see and, and he was, <laughs> go ahead. Let me see the preservatives. <laughs> There's no preservatives in oak leaf. It's the finest of blackberry. And what, what else is in there? Oak vineyards, <laughs> Livermore, <laughs> and Ripon, California. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Should we do a little bit of a pour? Do a pour. I don't know if we're going to be able to keep up an English accent the whole episode. No. Sorry. It would be pol- fun. We apologize to our English listeners. Sorry, I love uh, English people. <laughs> yeah, man. I like the accent, especially on uh, the f- of the female variety. I oh, like yeah. that accent very well, very much. We also like uh, Caribbean accents. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know, all y'all in England too. You know, you make fun of us Americans because we yeah. like say like every like other like like word like 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 like. I hate that. That drives me nuts. And the metric, the metric system versus standard. <laughs> Good old American counting. I just want to hear poor. Yeah, like, yeah. Are you into that ASMR stuff? I ask every guest. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? The like the the. Oh, never mind. I'll, I'll send you some <laughs> some links and whatnot. But uh, what is, I have to look up what it stands for. But essentially, people, it's relaxing to them. Like uh, people chew or pour oh, or like yeah. you know like I those know exactly those those noises about. that are yeah like everyday sound things, machine sounds yeah. And I guess turns a lot of people on too. Oh. But anyways, yeah. Let's get a bit of pull here. Poor. Is it poor? Hey, 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 hey! You're up to my poor. (laughs) 
the finest of oak leaf. All right. Flush that toilet when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and our greasy drinking good old fashioned bottled water. H2O. Yum, yum, <clears throat> yum, yum. Okay. Where do I put this? I think we'll just put it. I can't put it there. I gotta put it down here. Don't spill it. Yep. Look like a murder scene. Okay. So, first question. My brother! Yes, 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 yes. Who yes, yes. Who the hell is D Greasy? D Greasy. Birth name, Duran. <laughs> If I'm pulled over by the police, it's Darren. Uh, middle name, Gamaliel. Last name, Green, with the E at the end. It's not French. I am not French. Even though I tell some people that because they was like, why do your last name, why does your last name have an E at the end? So, one time, so a side note, uh, my bro Quentin knows this, and so does uh, Ray and everybody else. I think I, I, I told you this. Uh, it was a pizzeria on in East Akron. So, I told him my last name. I said green with the E at the end. On the receipt when I went to go pick up the pizza, they said green with an E on the receipt. Wow. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So they spelled green, G-R-E-E-N, and then with an E. After. Yeah, that's what they typed on the receipt. <laughs> Did they put hyphen with an E? <laughs> no, they just said with an E. It's like, that's wonderful. Yeah, man. Funny. Wow. Yeah, originally from Flint, Michigan. Yeah, you know, we still have a water issue up there. So, yeah. you know. Water, it's essential. <laughs> they don't care about giving the people clean water. They do need water. Um, see, I've been a little everywhere, Midwest, uh, not living, but just traveling. Uh, as far as martial arts go, that's me and this guy. We've been like martial arts for the longest. But uh, we did the. Uh, yeah, that, uh, wait, I got, should I roll up the sleeve? <laughs> <laughs> too late now. <laughs> right, too late. But uh, you know, I'm an '80s kid, born in 1980. Uh, I went to school in Pittsburgh. I'm yeah. an art major, kind of a comic nerd, if you if you will, because I do yeah. want to do comic books. Draw. I haven't painted in a while. I got to get back to that. Uh, you know, I'm artsy. That's really it, man. Yeah. You know, I like music stuff. And like you're that. a beautiful soul, oh, my friend. You. And yeah, so where we met, uh, we met doing martial arts mm -hmm. and uh really where we first bonded was at a martial arts tournament this was yeah. like you had you'd been going to the martial arts school that i was working at yeah. for i don't know a few months before the first term and then we competed in tournament together we actually had to technically face each other didn't we oh yeah um but we <laughs> didn't it was one of those like yeah we're not gonna fight each other yeah why well, um, do it since we're teammates and whatnot but it was cool because just being there, you know, and helping all the other kids and teammates was it was a really cool bonding experience. Yeah. And so we kind of forged our brothers in arms yeah. thing, right? Because a lot of them didn't even know what to do at the tournament. No, it was no, funny. no, no, no. Yeah. Was, they were fish out. They were definitely fish out of water. But you mentioned uh, Flint. So you're Flintstone, right? Of course. Now, <clears throat> if you're not familiar with that, that is Flint, Michigan. Not Fred Flintstone. Not Fred Flintstone. Well, <laughs> a suburb of Detroit, right? Detroit, I guess you could say it's a suburb. No, no. It's its own. It's its, it's own thing. But how far from Detroit is? Uh, about 40, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. So it's kind of like the Akron to Cleveland deal. Yeah, that's right? what it is, basically. So that's what it is. How did growing up in Flint, Michigan, how did that etch, how did that shape and mold you into the man you are today? Uh, Well... I learned what to do, what not to do at an early age, young. Um, you know, what parts of town to go to, what parts of town not to go to, just from just being from your neighborhood, your side of town. Uh, what was safe, what wasn't safe. I seen a lot, did a lot. Not a lot, lot. I yeah. did enough <laughs> that I shouldn't have been doing growing right. up. You know, enough where my mom knew, but she didn't want to kill me. Uh, rest her so. But, you know, we was exposed to a lot. At an early age, man, like going to elementary school, I, it was kids I went to school with used to sell drugs, man. Mm. In elementary school, in elementary school, elementary wow. school, <laughs> you know. So, you, you know, you see a lot, you experience a lot. It's you know, it, either you become it or you know what not to do and where to go from there, man. I've seen people get beat up and robbed and all kind of stuff early, like you know, I'm the oldest of uh. All my brothers and sisters, you know. How many? Stop, and and, and how many do you have? I got brothers and sisters. Uh, by blood, it's five. Uh, not blood. It's about a good fifteen. <laughs> fifteen of you jokers. So <laughs> wow. You know. <laughs> but, it's funny. The reason I mention that is because it's like every time 
you know, you met somebody, oh yeah, that's my brother, that's my cousin, yeah. that's my brother, that's my sister. It's like, damn! <laughs> I thought I had a big, you know, my mom's side of Italian family, she had uh, six sisters and a brother. I thought I came from a big family, but damn, yeah. like you dwarf it, you know? My dad's side, it's 14. No, 15 and then. Yeah. You're, so your dad has 14 brothers and sisters? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many, how many different moms? Because that's just one. Oh my one. God. Just one. Well, I take that back. My grandfather, he was married to a lady before he was a World War One or Two veteran, something like that. I think two, yeah. probably two. But um, uh, you know, he met my grandmother, I guess, when he came back, because my granddad did live in France. In France, but we don't. My last name isn't Stephen. That's my dad's side. They're Stephen. My mom's side is Green. Okay, my granddad uh, from Port Gibson, Mississippi. Um, my oh. dad's side is from St. Louis, you know, so Midwest yeah. Southern thing. But um, it's funny because on my mother's side, I have two cousins. They're older. One has twenty six kids. One has twenty five <laughs> kids. So, what the? Fuck? <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't That's meet them. That's a lot them, of farm hands. Right. Holy I didn't shit. meet. I didn't meet them all, but like I didn't know this until my grandfather died. This yeah. was about twenty sixteen. I think. So you don't have a family tree. You have a family forest. Right. Holy yeah, shit! I'm brother. still trying to get to know everybody, you know. Wow. Yeah, because I remember you telling me you going to some some family gatherings, and you're like, "Oh, you're meeting all these family members you've never met before." <laughs> right, and they were like, "Who are you?" I'm like, "I'm Carla's son." <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, right, and, right. So you know, I meet I meet people here and there yeah. sometimes. It's like, "Oh, is that your mom? That your dad?" And you know, it's good to know your family, so you're not right. getting involved with family or. You don't have issues with family, and you find out years later it's your family. Yeah. I remember one time um, I hadn't seen my one cousin uh, in some years, but I was in, might have been ninth grade, maybe 10th grade. No, it had to be ninth grade. And um, we used to go to a skating rink back home called uh, CLC. So everybody from any part of town would go to the skating rink. You skate at first, then a certain time when skating's over, they take a... Uh, you take the skates off and you go to the floor and dance. So we saw my one cousin, me and my brother, that's my brother Red. Uh, I was like, that's Jamal. But he kept walking back and forth like, who is these dudes? And he was looking funny. I'm like, he don't even know we're his cousins because we haven't seen each other right, in so long. Right. So I was like, we saw Jamal. Yeah. It could have been an issue, but my grandma was like, that's your cousins. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nothing major, but yeah. You know, he just didn't know who he was. So, so growing up in Flint definitely was, you know, tough, right? It was tough, man. You know, we got to experience a lot. Yeah. Like, you know, it was it was fun. I mean, you know. But you don't take anything for granted? Nah, no. Everything's, no. everything's earned, you know, nothing's given, everything's earned. Everything is so like earned. Like LeBron said that or some shit. But, uh, because yeah, it's similar to Akron. I think Flint and, Flint and Akron are very similar. Yeah. That's where I, I was born and raised in Akron. So, um... Yeah, so there's definitely like something to be said about growing up in the Midwest, especially yeah. in uh, kind of that the, these the Rust Belt. Yeah. It's a different kind of people, yeah. you know, than you meet elsewhere. That's for it's, sure. It's it's, uh, <laughs> it's some some honest people. Yeah. It's some straightforward people. Yeah. Some real people. Some people. Real, that, that, you, you touched on something that is so important to me: real people, and that's why yeah. I think that's one of the reasons I, I was always, you know, you and me were were always you know, close and why we initially connected yeah. is because you're a real dude, man. And I'm, I'm drawn to real energy, real people, man. I try to be, man. I, I don't have a choice because, you know, uh, why, why fake it? Oh yeah. Why be something you're not like, my thing is this, like if it's something I need to say to you, I need, I'm going to say it instead of just Absolutely. like, why tell everybody else, but not tell the person that yeah. you need to say it to. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I mean, uh, you don't take stuff for granted. You can't take friendships for granted. You can't take life for granted, man. I remember seventh grade, a dude was showing off his uh, deuce deuce on the bus. Wow. And he was like, yeah. look what yeah, I got. Yeah, and sticking yeah. him. I got. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, if you yeah. know about the Midwest, you know, a lot of streets yeah. have potholes everywhere you go. Oh, if man. If the bus would have hit a pothole, I'm sure I, it might have went off yep. and I would have probably got popped. Yeah. So. Wow. That's my mom crazy. didn't play that, though. She didn't care who you were. Yeah. She she wanted no, nobody mess with her kids or her family yeah. or none of that. So. And you've only spoken very very highly. Oh yeah. Uh, of the mom, I'm, I you know wish I would have been able to you know meet her. But tell me you know because I know you've talked about in brief 
and you mentioned it earlier about you know your mom uh, passing. Just do you talk about your mom and the impact she had on you? Oh man, my mom had a big impact on me. Like, um, let's see, me and my brothers, because my mom only had all boys. Um, Bless her girl. soul. She did. Want <laughs> she wanted a girl bad, but it just didn't happen. Mm. But uh, you know, she was the middle child of her and my grand or Dot Green, Mean Green, Dorothy Green. Loved her to death. Uh, her and Jesse Green, um, they had three kids. So my mom was the middle child. But, you know, uh, she would take us everywhere, man. Parks. You know, I remember before she had a car walking, man. Just going here and there, catching the bus. Mm -hmm. I don't how to catch the bus or see stuff at an early age, man. You know, she would... Uh, you know, she never bit her tongue about nothing. She didn't take no mess from nobody. I bet. <laughs> she was a short... Little lady, but yeah, you know, she didn't play around. And I'll say this, man, seeing the pictures of her, <laughs> you definitely can tell you're her son. Oh, yeah. So, what, um, if you don't mind me asking, like, what, what happened? How did you my know? mom got sick with cancer? She had mm. stomach cancer. Like, I didn't know you could get stomach cancer back at the time. Um, I was 25 years old when my mother passed. Mm. I found out she was sick after I moved here and didn't know my grandmother was telling me she had lost some weight. And, uh, you know, my mother wasn't, she never smoked. She wasn't a drinker. If anything, it might have been a wine cooler. <laughs> you know. Any Bartles and James? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Seagram's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something sweet. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't a drinker. She wasn't a smoker. I believe it was a lot of worrying, man. Not, not per se for me and my brothers, but um, my stepdad, he passed away when my youngest brother was five. My baby brother. So... She worried a lot about what was going to happen with life, like what to do. You know, my mother worked. She's been working since she was 14. So that's probably why she made me get a job at 14. But uh, she uh, wow. she instilled that in this work. Don't kiss anybody's ass because if you kiss ass, you got to kiss ass for life. Why? So uh, she got cancer. I didn't know it. She had surgery. She started to recover. But she just was just tired, man. You know, just like they said, chat with Bozeman was like, yeah. I'm, I'm done, coach. Take me out the game. Yeah. He told God to take him out the game. My mom was tired. Oh, yeah. She passed away. Uh, I was 25 years old. My brother Red was 22. My youngest brother, Jalen, was 10. So, you know, <clears throat> that, was, that was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done, had to go through, experience. You know, I've experienced death before, man, like, yeah. you know, but nothing like that. You know, I, I know people, one minute, you know, they're in a, in a neighborhood in the hood and they get killed. Right. They go to the funeral or people you go to school with, something happens, man. But, like, my mother, she, you like, know, she yeah. was just tired. But one thing I do know, she is still uh, God in this, you know. Some people might be like, well, no, I mean, you know, I believe in this. I mean, believe in what you want to believe in. America has freedom of religion, but, you know, th this is how we was raised. I know it is a God or a higher power or creator, whatever you want to call it, for the simple fact that I've had some supernatural experiences, man. You know, in college, I know it had to be her and my grandmother praying because sometime, man, kicking it, partying, I don't know how we oh, made yeah. it home. Like, right. I don't know how we made it home some nights, man, but it's just been some uh, experiences I've had, man, being asleep, and you feel something, like, get you up, like, sit you up, <laughs> like, you can't be late for this class, or you yeah. fail. And she smacking you, <laughs> get your ass up, boy. <laughs> much, you know, or, like, just, I remember, like, she's the one that put me on to catching the train to get from uh, Pittsburgh to Ohio, and then going to Michigan. So, I was like, dang, I left too late. Dude pull up out of nowhere, like, where you got to go? I'm like, who are you? Like, you know, I'm a little nervous. Oh, yeah. Like, am I going to have to fight this one out? Or the dude trying to kidnap <laughs> right, me or right, something? Right. I, ain't, I ain't for that hostile type stuff. Right. But he was like, no, I'm just a cool dude, man. Dude dropped me off at the uh, Amtrak. Yeah. I was like, he came out of nowhere, you right. know? So. And that's a like risk, that. you know, hitchhiking in right, this country. Right. If you're in, you know. I was waiting if on a you're, bus. If you're in time. Europe or another country, okay, then it's no big deal. But here in the state, <laughs> right. no, you don't do that. <laughs> you know, Green River Killer. Uh -huh. or right. You right. don't know, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just crazy. But now I was waiting for the bus and the dude pull up. 
He saw me with the two suitcases and the backpack. Like, now, were you waiting on the bus? I'm like, yeah, I'm waiting on the bus. Who are you? <laughs> so it was cold, too, but the dude, he came out of nowhere, man. So dropped me off, man. Just stuff like that. So, wow. but, you know. Uh, how, how old was your mom? Was my mom you? died. She was about 45. Wow. 45. So young, man. Yeah. Wow. She had me young, man. My mom had me. She was 18. Wow. Yeah. My dad was 19, a year older. So, you know, fresh out of high school, pretty much. Yeah. But, you know. Well, you know. I'm... It didn't work. You know, my dad loved my mom. <laughs> yeah. My mom yeah. loved him, but it just didn't work, man. And, you know, not, not to uh, throw shade at my dad or nothing, but, you know, sometimes he wouldn't come around. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it is what it is. I just know that no matter what, uh, I got to be there for mine. Yeah. You know. I Absolutely. Gotta... And, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate about, you know, having kind of that absent father. Oh, yeah, man. Um, you know, I, I'm, I you know, mentioned a little bit, too, you know, with my dad and some of the issues that he's had. And hopefully I have him on here very soon. We can talk. That'll be kind of, that'll be kind of fun. But, yeah, I, I, you know, it's interesting because... Every time you talk about your mom, you know, your eyes light up and glow. And I can, oh, yeah. not only, you know, talking, you're talking about her spirit, you know, kind of pervading you and being with you is kind of a, a shield, but just the impact she's had on you is yeah. that it, her, you know, her legacy is carrying on through you, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. She's Side clearly note. done a beautiful job. Side note, like the first martial arts lessons I learned was from my mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Duck. Yeah, I'm gonna hit you. Right. Right. <laughs> you can't what block did, him off. What did she have? My mom had the wooden spoon. My you? mom had belt, switch, oh, the house switch. slipper, uh, <laughs> the hospital Incoming. Shoe, the rubber sole, oh, wow. wooden spoon, yeah. her hand. You know, whatever like, she could get, whatever she could, whatever get. was close. <laughs> right, and it's like this. Not being funny, but like a lot of uh, like black people, like how some of us is raised, man. Like, I mean, when you discipline, this for a reason, like. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. my parents, when my mom, my dad never whooped me ever. My grandma and my mom, them was the ones that would get you. They get us all. Me, my brother, my cousin, all my cousins. Like, uh, you know, you you discipline, man. You got to know how to act and how not to act. You know, like I remember getting in trouble at school. Oh, you go home, you get it. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? And when oh, yeah. we went to school, you could get it paddled. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I, I don't know if I've told this story on the podcast, <laughs> but I went to a Catholic school for... Uh, first, second, and third grade. I didn't know that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, it was funny because, you know, you would stand in line at the drinking fountain, right? And not you had the head nun would be watching. With the yardstick. Oh my God! Yep, she did. So, you know, basically what would happen is, you would come up to the drinking fountain, you know, turn it on. It was. And I'll tell you, it was the best one in the in the joint. It was the best one in the school. <laughs> you always had your favorite one, the one that was ice cold. It just right. tasted it right. And it was clean. It was clean. No residue. Right? You could yeah. see through the water. It wasn't brown coming out. <laughs> Not like the Flint water, you know? But, so, anyways, you know, you come up, you come up, you get your drink, right? The person behind you would be doing this. Oh, they for, come sorry, down. for that, for those of you that are listening to this. So, the down. person behind you would hold up their hand and go, one, two, three. Three. By the time they got to three, you had to be done with your drink. I was thirsty. I think we just came for recess. I, you know, got into some trouble on the on the basketball courts <laughs> so or whatever. Maybe some school school and some fools. My crossover, whatever. But I'm taking a drink, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going past three on this one today, man. Right? <laughs> so it's I'm counting my head. I'm, after three, I'm just like, I'm keep, oh, this is so good. I'm probably up to five, six, seven. Next thing I feel. <laughs> <laughs> sister whacked my hand with I mean I think there were razor blades on the end of this this ruler man she went Whoosh. I went ah I mean I think I still have a mark to this day but god that just that just man that left such an impression on me hit me with that fucking yardstick so there you go <laughs> yeah uh, let's you mentioned martial arts um I Martial arts, you know, why did you get into it? How did you get into it? And why do you <clears> love them so much? And what, what kind of impact has it had on your life? Ooh, I know see. it's a loaded question, but, uh, that's, that's but cool, I know man. that, you know, because you work also as a martial arts instructor. So it's, it's 
you know, such a fundamental part of you, who you are as a being. Yeah, man, um, let's see. I wanted to do martial arts since I was about four. Four years old, right? So, uh, I watched uh, my uncle. Yeah. <laughs> my uncle, man, we call him man, his name is Jesse Green. <laughs> he would come home whenever he'd be out kicking it, wherever he'd be at in the hood or whatever. Uh, he came home one night, so, you know, I used to try to follow behind my uncle and be like my uncle, so... Uh, He's watching a kung fu movie, man, and I'm like, I'm watching it too. So you had these kung fu theater or whatever. So first movie was some, uh, it was like four dudes. They was all like brothers or whatever. One was kind of invincible, except for his midsection, his waist. So two of them got killed. I never knew the name of the movie. I was like, this is movie dope. <laughs> so then a Bruce Lee movie came. Oh, that's it. <clears throat> that's all it took, man. One dude. Yep. Beating up like thirty people. I'm like, man, I gotta be like this dude, man. This dude is like dope. He ain't taking no mess from nobody. Yeah. He ain't being bullied, you know, because yep. I wasn't the biggest dude in my elementary classroom, man. You know, it was always some dude trying to be like, hey, give me that. What you got? No, you can't have it. So, you know, I got tired of sometimes people trying to pick with me and my mom would catch it. She'd be like, you know, people, my mom was sweet, but. People was kind of scared of her because she just didn't play. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want my mom defending my battles for me. So I was telling people I knew karate when I was like in fourth grade. So I got in trouble for grabbing people, dropping back, and yeah. flipping them over by putting my foot in their stomach. <laughs> so I got in, in trouble little, for that. Uh, <laughs> what is that? Uh... <laughs> like a backdrop or a backflip. Oh, whatever. okay. I got you. I'm thinking you did, <laughs> what they call that in judo, the... Uh... They put their foot in the stomach and throw. Yeah, I got Shit, in trouble that for called? that. That's I can't think of what it is. That'll bother me. We'll figure it out. Uh, yeah. I got in trouble for that. So, Last Dragon had came out before that. So, you know, Bruce Leroy was the first black dude to go Super Saiyan. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I like both of them. Show Enough was just bad because he didn't care. And Bruce Leroy had the finest chick in the whole uh, city of uh, Harlem. So, <laughs> I'm like, man, I got it. I really want to do this. So, you know, we watch all this stuff. So, my mom like, yeah, you could you do it later. Because, you know, she was working to take care of other stuff. So, I had to wait. So, I took my first class uh, when I was 13. 1993. Uh, first guy I ever met to teach me was <laughs> the late, great Jackie King. Mm -hmm. So... And you spoke a lot little, about him. Man, that me. little dude, man. I love that little old man. He was <laughs> like... He was another father figure to me, man. Like, uh, he would tell you what it was, man. Like, you know, we grew up in Flint, man. So people, people aren't going to like just be like, "Oh, okay, you from this little town? Well, I'm from New York, I'm from the big city. You a country boy?" So well, I'll show you. But uh, so I took my first lesson. You know, I was like, I like it. So she's like, all right, we'll come back when when it's time to come back. So it all worked out. I came back a couple years later, and the rest was history, man. Like, the f yeah. uh, this is a side note. So he would say, get dressed. That means put on your gear, like, to fight. I didn't have any gear. So I'm like, he was like, everybody get dressed. I go to the locker room, put on my clothes, and come back and sit down. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, you said get dressed. <laughs> so he's like, oh, man, that, that means get your gear on so you can fight. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. It was funny, but, you know, I learned a lot, man. We went to a lot of tournaments. Yeah. That's how I got, like, decent on the tournament scene. Yeah, decent. This guy, you know, I've seen that wall. <laughs> I mean, he, your your trophy wall is, like, the size of my house. I mean, it's <laughs> nah. unbelievable how many trophies, how many tournaments, how many medals this cat has won. It's crazy. We'll have to find a... I have to post this on social media and put a photo of you in front of it. Well decorated, my man, friend. I'm trying, man. The only thing, like, I won a couple state titles and some yeah. national titles, but never a world. That's the thing I really right. want to do before I hang up those little foam boots and yeah. hand pads. But it really, it really wasn't never about the, the trophies. Right. It was about, like, how good can I get or how good yeah. can I be? And, I mean, you know, when you're young, you can do a lot more yeah. than you can do when you get older. Yeah. So. Well, and also too, when you're young, it's more about like, oh, this 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 moves cool or that's oh, yeah. cool. I can kick ass. Yeah. And then as you get older, you you reflect back and like, damn, I learned so much about myself through all oh, this. Man. Like, this and, yeah, and this is this is crazy. Like, I never really liked fighting at first. I yeah. didn't because I seen some stuff, man. And I'm like, man, this dude got hurt. For real. Or then, like, when the UFC got big, when it was no rules, no weight class, yeah. people was getting, like, oh. disfigured, man. Yeah. So, you know, Taylor like, Tooley getting his teeth kicked out <laughs> in the first one. 
Dude, so I was just like, well, what if I get jacked up and I look weird for the rest of my life? So, you know what? One day after class, a friend of mine named Derek Bradley, we call him Dirk. That's my dude. He beat me up. I was like, wait a minute. Am I supposed to be getting beat up? Man, he was like, man, you got to get better than what you is. So I had to learn how to take punches and give them back. So, you know, it wasn't about like point sparring, but it was about can you give what you can yeah. you give it out and take it you know and that's one thing i hate about certain martial arts schools and stuff they teach you oh don't worry about it you get okay don't hit him too hard but i'm like on the street if somebody uh, hit you and you yeah. ball up and start crying they're gonna yeah. keep hitting you you know there's worse. there's something to, it's it's interesting like we need to find a balance because between the hardness <clears throat> and the softness there you know back in the day yeah there were, were some instructors that were just beat the hell out oh, of you. Oh, vicious, vicious. <laughs> but also look at today and our culture as a whole is very soft. Man, it's soft so the word. Man. You got it right. Weak. Like eighth place trophies? It was what? No, it was no eighth place trophies. Yeah, right. When you, I first started, but, you get first, second, you went, third. If you get fourth, that's yeah. just that's just participation. Yeah, when you win, bottom line is it's black white. If you win or lose. Yeah. And, and the reason I think there's we're having issues societally is that's manifesting because so many of these kids, this <laughs> upcoming generation, feel entitled because it's the me generation or they were given everything they want. They were told that they're special. Not to say nobody, not everyone's special. We, we are, but right. But the point, was real quick. yeah, go blow your nose. I should, I need to have a box of tissues knowing this guy and how much he blows his, how much he blows his nose. But my point is uh, that these these kids nowadays. You know, societally, it's manifesting that we have a softer society because they feel so entitled, because they expect to be given things, like overnight success, overnight becoming viral on social media, on the internet, or overnight making all this money when it's like you have to put in years and years of hard work and dedication and effort to get there. So having somebody smack you, Having somebody hit you and say, guess what? Life's not fair. Deal with it. Right. Pick yourself up. Like, we need that. And, and you know, I'm sure at King's Karate, man, you were taught <laughs> that in spades. Man, all the time. One thing is, like, we were taught, it's, it was a family uh, situation, but it was also, you know, you can't be soft. Like, and it ain't saying, like, being soft is wrong, but, like, you got to have some type of... You got to dig down yeah. deep. Yeah, and, and let us and let us, yeah. let us us differentiate. We're not talking about being uh, kind and emotional right. and so, soft. That we're was never the That's key. not what we're talking about. We, of course, you know, we both stress. We both, are, I would say, are very much in touch with our emotions yeah. and our... I don't know if I, you would say feminine side, but our... Like, I would both classify both of us as really kind, empathetic yeah. people. So we're not saying that. We're just saying... When it comes to life's the, the here's, here it is the vicissitudes the ups and downs of life and the reality of life people are weak and they and and they're soft and they tend to collapse and cave in instead of fight right. back. Right. We we were taught to dig down deep. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying. Okay, um, I'm doing forty push-ups or fifty push-ups or whatever. You know, and I can't do the last 10. Do I just quit or do I dig down right. and, and succeed? It was a, a clip from, what football movie was that? Where he had the guy carrying him on his back. I uh, can't think of the name of it. I don't know. Uh, but he was like, you got four more yards to go. He was like, I can't. I'm burning. But he, he, he persevered and he yeah. did it, man. Like, yeah. a lot of people are working hard and, you know, other people aren't working hard, and the ones that aren't working hard are getting rewarded. So why should I work hard if I'm gonna get mm. rewarded? Mm. And that's what it is with society too, man. Like people look at like, okay, well, I ain't going I'm about to do this. I ain't going to school, or I ain't doing that, or you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just dump my kids off on somebody and not discipline them. And like, as a whole, I think our society is just shit. I'm just gonna be real with you, man. Because yeah. like, you got kids that don't respect nothing, not even a parent, yeah. and then when they encounter somebody. 
that's going to make you respect yeah. them, whether it be in the street or whether it be in a correctional facility or just somebody yeah. in general that you don't mess with. <laughs> like, uh, And they're like, wait a minute, what happened? And they can't fight, so they want to shoot. So they're, I'm just like... They're going to have to come up against Fleece Johnson if uh, they make it into the clink. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but, but, you, but, but I think a lot of that has to do with parenting, too. Yeah, like, and, don't be a sorry-ass parent. Right, That's right. the best way I can put it. And not everything... Not right. everything is black and white. Yes, like you can be the most stellar parent in the world and just and have, kid still and you can have up. Jeffrey Dahmer, right? Yeah. Stalin, you know, but <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> but I think that's the thing. Not parents, they don't have enough accountability, right. and they'll, they'll say, "Well, I blame the internet. I blame YouTube. I blame all this." Well, let me. You pay the bill. Thank you. And who's ra- is you is YouTube raising the kid or you? It's your responsibility. You're letting the the internet raise him. So parents are taking as much accountability speaking of parenting you are a father you're a family man speak about what it means to you to be a father and how that has how that has what have you learned about yourself through being a father i learned to being a father i learned to put other like it's, it's, it's crazy i don't having to take care of individuals that you watch them grow and you're not ready at first, but nobody's ever ready. Uh, it's a blessing, man, because I I wasn't ready to be that. But just to see as my son grows and his sister grows, she's seventeen, he's twelve, about to be thirteen, man. I it's just crazy, man. But like I just think it go fast. So you mm. want to be there for them, mm. be the best parent you can. Don't neglect them because when they get a certain age, they might not want to be bothered with you. So. Yeah. Spend as much time as you can, be in their life, be positive, you yeah. know, whether they, they they give it their all or they try, just got to be there and show them what to do and what not to do because you always want your kid to be uh, better. Yeah. You want your child to uh, be better off than you were, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Each generation is supposed to do better. Sure. And I mean, there's sure. two other kids that aren't mine that, you know, I met them because I've been working in a, in a school setting for about 15, 16 years, man, and... You know, one little girl, she's such a cute, cool little kid, man. She's like, she's telling kids I was her dad. I was like, what? what? <laughs> but so I just let her do it. Yeah. So she's like, you tell them I, I'm, I'm, you're my dad. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then there's another kid who Matt knows. He's in the Air Force now, man. His name's oh, wow. Zaire. That's, oh, man. that's my dude. He's like my, he's not my mind, I, but he's like my oldest. He's like, man, Matt, solid, man. He bought me a gyro, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bought him a gyro. <laughs> that was it. But yeah, and so, you know, when you talk about that too, you work, you know, basically inner city schools and you've yeah. had an impact. Don't, and, and you see it. You've had an impact <clears throat> on a lot of kids' lives, whether you know it or not. Not only through school, but also being a martial arts instructor. So yeah. it's interesting, you know, you being a, a, a father, a parent, but also, you know, a, you know, a teacher is like... To me, I don't think there's a better profession. I don't think there's, I should say, I don't think there's a more important profession than that because literally, you're literally sh- helping shape the the minds yeah. and the lives of the future generation. And you see it firsthand, man, what parents care, what parents just yeah. give a kid some kind of mechanical device yeah. and, and send them off on yeah. their way, man. Yeah. Like, and these kids don't know. Yeah. They don't know their left from their right, man. You know? And, but, and, you've, and you spoke about it, you know, how. Like that, they change. I remember this one. He's you know, on camera now, but he's sitting over there, your son. And uh, I just like it was yesterday, I'm looking at him. He's got, you know, a couple of teeth missing in the front. <laughs> we made a, a movie, you know, during a summer camp. And he was a ninja. He's, what did he say? We need to go get these guys or something like that. <laughs> but he, that was what, like five years ago? No, Six was, years ago? Nope. That was about a good seven Seven How old eight. is he now? He's twelve. That was he was like okay. five. Yeah, so six, seven years ago. Yeah. Wow. There you go. So you talk about change, how fast <laughs> like things change. But that's why it's important that to, like you said, savor those moments and be present. Be present when you're with your family yeah. so that you are fully Same absorbed thing. in those moments. Friends too, man. And and you have such an impact. Because it's not too. only it's not just about quantity of time it's right. about quality it's of time quality. and i know you guys bond uh, and you guys have guy, bonded man. over everything he's basically a mini version of you comic <laughs> books video games mo- you know crazy movies kung fu movies and shit it's funny because he would want to he would want to hang with this dude 
like I'd be over. He's like, well, you get to hang with him all the time. We don't have any time to like game. I'm yeah, like, my bad. Yeah. So I would bring him over. We'd come over and him and Matt would game and I'd sit there yeah. and fall asleep while they're gaming. Yeah, good and times. it's funny just watching him game, but... Yeah, now he's getting too old for us. <laughs> right. He's going to get him a girlfriend. Oh, God. <laughs> he said he oh, wanted to be God. a bachelor and just... He said Smart. he didn't want any drama in life, but... <laughs> you, you say that now. Until you, you meet say that, that now. Just wait, though. Until you meet just that wait. girl. You meet that just girl wait. that's in the anime and, then, and all that uh, stuff. Oh, right that's now. a wrap. That's it. All right. It's crazy, man. Another thing I do, like, some, a little shot of wisdom, I would say, man, cherish your friends, family, Amen. and just yeah. be a good person. Because, yeah. I mean, tomorrow's not promising to anybody, yeah. you know, unless you, you know, you living right. Then, you know, God got you. But you don't know who's going to be here and who's not going to be here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's just crazy, man. People die every day, unfortunately. But right. we just got to be uh, better than we were the day before. Absolutely. Yeah. You couldn't. You couldn't be more. Uh, you can be more. You couldn't be more precise and correct, man, and, and cogent. I think, you know, that's what it's all about, is cherishing everything you have, and especially, you know, that's why, since we don't work together anymore, that's why uh, it's so it important was, it was the for us though, to ha to hang out as much as we can, you know, and and that's what right. happens. You know, we've all had it in life where. You think, oh man, this relationship with this so and so is gonna last forever, and then something happens, and just in of no one's fault, you right. just you just drift. But I think if it's somebody that you're truly in tune with and sync with, with and sync with, no time you're, you're gonna if it's important to you, you'll do whatever it takes to sustain it. Yeah. And I read it. I remember reading a study, 1983. I think the average American had three close friends, mm -hmm. and then 20 years later, in 2003, the average American had two, and now. Eight, you know, 17, 18 years later, they think it's even less. That's crazy. And, and it, you know, that just speaks to the point of if you have a couple of people in your life that you call, consider close friends, and we're not just talking, we're not talking family, but close friends, you are beyond blessed, dude. So right. I consider you like my brother. Yeah. So, you know, that's why it's so important. I, I know that, you know, hopefully we're walking with our walkers. <laughs> going up in it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, yeah, or it may be, you know, it, we may be, it may be hover carts, you know, hover, right. you know, jets, and we talk about the Flintstones, I'm are going to be jets. I'm going pants. Yeah. <laughs> you better be up to here, too. <laughs> like Vito. <laughs> but anyways, you know, that'll be us. We'll be going, we'll be watching, you know, John Wick 75 in the theater. Uh, he'll be out there, too. <laughs> Hit him with the cane. Yep. yep. <laughs> Throw some jerk in there. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we never did, man, was we never did our Pulp Fiction for Halloween. We got to do it yeah, one year. We do got to do that. You know? Yeah, just Double Dragon. The, uh. Yeah, but Jer, that, I could just see that Jerry curl. I was watching. I, I, I was watching a music. I stumbled across a, a Captain Hollywood project from the nineties. Right, uh -huh. the German. I I have an obscure taste for uh, like nineties Euro dance music. Anyway, so I, I came across Captain Hollywood project the song more and more. Right, uh -huh. more and more and more. Anyways, this. This guy, man, he had the most bitchin' uh, Jerry Curl ponytail and a giant zoot suit, and he's up, you know, dancing. I gotta send it to you, man. You would love it. That's about as funny. You would love it. Do need find out to Uba? Um, something I want to talk about, yes, because it was, you know, basically COVID. Aside, aside from COVID, right. the biggest news item last year. COVID nineteen. Uh, besides that. You know, obviously, Black Lives Matter and George Floyd and, and everything that sparked Some off. Some situation. Um, I, I posted, as soon as that happened, I posted a picture of you and me. I remember. And I just, just basically saying that, you know, no matter what everyone looks like, we're all fucking human. We're all the same. We Unless either love each other and, and, and understand each other and care. And the biggest thing, the biggest issue... The biggest div divisive issue with humans is viewing somebody else that doesn't look like you, worship like you, uh, have the same g have the same gender, sexual orientation as you. They are we classify them as other. You know what I mean? So, the whole point with that post was: When's the last time you try to understand somebody that thought different than you, lived different than you? You know. And so I posted, saying, "Hey, this is my brother." And I understand that I've, in my life, I've had, I've been entitled with white privilege, just being a white male. And I said, I don't know what it's like to ever, you know, drive down the road and have a cop pull you over for no fucking reason except for the color of your skin. 
you know. So my point with, with that post was just to say, hey, it's so important for all of us to try and understand and empathize with somebody else's plight in life and look outside of just your own. If we all did that, had more empathy and understanding and compassion towards each other, this would be a much better place mm. to live. We're all, you know, in this world fucking together. We all should live and support each other. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, what was, what's it been like from your perspective as a, as a black male with, you know, everything that happened? Well, some of you don't, don't know that uh, it's crazy, man, because I've had that happen to my family. I had a cousin, Houston, Texas. Uh, you can look it up. His name was Robert Steven Jr. They called him. He had a little rap name, Actual Facts. Love my cousin. It's crazy because him and my brother look alike, and they also look like my dad. So... You know, uh, I got another cousin, uh, D'Angelo. He looked like my dad. They always looked like they could twin, twin. Mm -hmm. But so that's that's another thing with the whole George Floyd and the whole oh they're disrespecting the flag. It's a piece of cloth. At the end of the day, it got nothing to do with disrespecting yeah. the flag. My cousin went to the store two days after Christmas. He had some drinks or whatever. He was drunk a little bit. He went to the store. He didn't make it back home. He was beat to death. So it's crazy seeing somebody a little bit younger than you kind of grew up with, you know what I'm saying, just to see <clears throat> his body, to see what the, 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 the brutality they did to him, man. Like his face was messed up, swollen, his ear was reattached. They beat uh. him so bad he had a hat on his head. So, you know, you got that much rage to beat on somebody, but you're supposed to serve and protect because mm. this kid was drunk and I've seen people drunk get handcuffed and sat there yeah. and rides caught so I'm just like you know and it's crazy because I'm like he was just drunk man so he couldn't have said something that mad to piss you off doesn't matter what, right. if he said any right. if he exactly. said the worst thing you could ever say you it don't uh. take all of that you know what I'm saying I'm just like I got a friend that's a cop and he's a Jeet Kune Do instructor as well cool dude and he said, a lot of these guys come from these little towns. Yeah. They don't go to the classes that the, the force offers. He said, yeah. it's ridiculous. He said, then yeah, they're scared. Like, yep. why do the job if you're scared? And this is another cop telling me this. We're just saying it in general. He said, you don't never want to use your weapon. Like, with all these senseless shootings, you don't want to use your weapon. That's the last resort. You got a nice stick. You got mace. You got tasers. He, he was telling the little kid that, that I know. That had wow. asked him about, like, what's all this on your belt? So for all of that to happen to my cousin to be beat like that, man, you know, I felt some type of way. And I also got a cousin that's a cop. So, and I love yeah. my cousins. I love, you know, my family. I love my friends and all of that. But just to, like, see this, since yeah. it's up, up, you know, unrest, yeah. I mean, and you got, it's crazy because yeah. the world is just so messed up. I mean, you got people killing each other over dumbest stuff. You got people that's calling each other out on social media and all of that. Like, when we were kids, man, even teenagers in high school and all of that, all right, we just fight and right. that'll be it at the end of the day. So, it's not like that now, man. It's just like, you, you know, it's like people want to bully people. They want to keep people down. They want to keep people oppressed for nothing. And I'm just like, the world would be better off if we could come together. Yeah. And just, you know what I'm saying, understand one another, man. Like, shit, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. Just different tones of, of the color scheme. That's right. <laughs> period. Different. Yeah. You know, and like, unless, right. unless you got gills on your on <laughs> built in and you can breathe and survive underwater, yeah. that's really it, Well, man. you know, it doesn't, it, clearly there was something fundamentally wrong, Yeah. you know, is. with the police institutions. Of course, we're never saying, we're not saying... All cops are bad. No, that no, narrative. All cops are bad. It's like it's like any profession. You have, of course, you have you have balance. But the problem is, America is a racist country because of its racist roots. Yeah. And I don't care who you are. That is, you know, you can't sit and deny that, especially after everything you've seen. This country was built on the backs of slavery. Yeah. And 100, the 100, Native Americans. Hundred percent. And until America looks itself in the mirror, looks at its demons, and says, "Yeah, guess what." We are, and this is what we need to do. How do we make this right? How do we go forward and, and, and get past all this? Until that happens, you know, I 
it was going to be the same. It's nothing's yeah. really going to change. Look at look you at know? the Capitol. Um, not, to cut, not to cut you off, but look at what happened yeah, at the Capitol, yeah. man. I'm like, yeah. I will <laughs> I will say this at least, you know. That was hilarious, though. I can't lie because you got oh, people God, you yeah. got people kicking out windows with their whole business yeah. advertised yeah. on the jacket. Man. I, I will say this though, you know, I, I did see something where, um, you know, the new regime, if you will, mm-hmm. that's in, and I'm not the biggest fan of politicians in general, uh, but I don't like. But I will I like say, it either. but I will say at least uh, I saw something that what is it? Fifth, uh, I, I don't remember. I may have this backward. Don't quote me. But around fifty percent of uh, the new administration that's coming in uh, is people of color, right? I wasn't. I'm. I'm sure it wasn't anywhere near that before. Oh no! <laughs> and and I believe you know also it, a very high percentage of women as well. Diversity because. That's what, isn't that what the, this country, this idea was built? This, you know, the the the, the mixed salad of <laughs> people coming pot. around, a melting the melting pot of everyone coming together. No matter what you look like, no matter what you what your religion is, no matter what your language. Remember, the United States has no official language. It's like, right. it's so interesting that how far how people just view it's just you know, the flag and, and patriotism as whiteness, right? <laughs> right, but you right? got people that have put the, the flag bikinis on females, right. wear them in their back yeah. pocket, yeah. but yeah. if I kneel at the Super Bowl, or not the Super Bowl, any game, <laughs> like, and Colin Kaepernick is healthy and better than half of the quarterbacks they got now, like, yeah. come on, man. Like, yeah. my whole thing is, don't tell me how to protest right. if I'm doing it peacefully and then it's a problem. That just proves that what or that you got does people mean, telling, absolutely. Right. You got people that telling just LeBron to shut that up. It was, it was never about protest. It, it was about the color of the fucking skin and what they were protesting, guys. Let's be real. Um, I don't really want to, I don't really want to get too deep in politics. <laughs> right. but, but, but anyways, that's life. We're, it's not even just politics. We're, we're talking about right. humanity. Yeah. We're talking about human rights, guys. And that's Trump's... Oh, fuck that word. That that's <laughs> killed that word. That that is that's more important than than you know honestly, fucking anything else. My whole um, thing is this: yeah, if you're rich, you can't tell poor people how to live unless you experience that shit. Absolutely. You, you know. Absolutely. You can't if you're rich and you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You can't tell middle class people how to live. You have no idea what. It's right. Like. You don't know what yeah. they go through. You don't know and to me, they're not real people unless you suffer. And yeah, I get it. at some level, all human beings. Suffer, but until you you suffer those hardships every day of your life, you have no. Right. You how can you empathize? What is it? Yeah. What's the quote? Your 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 pleasure is in, you know, it's in direct proportion, to how much you've suffered. And you know when you're around that, and you have to, grow up in that environment. Right. Then you know, like we were talking about going back to you know talking <laughs> about you being in Flint, it changes you, edges you, and molds you into. And you could use that to be bitter. Or you, or you can, can rise it to, above it. To be better. Yeah, like, I'm going to say this. I got a friend of mine I was working with at my one part-time job. Cool dude. He a little older. His name's Derwin. He was like, man, he's from California. Mm-hmm. So he's from, like, the gang-banging capital, right? Oh, yeah. He was like, man, I'm, I'm some, man, I told some of my friends, man, like, some of them little Midwest cities, man, uh-huh. they, they real. Oh, <laughs> he yeah. said, man, they don't take no mess. Oh, you yeah. Know? And, like... Like absolutely, he, they see like what it is, man. Like out here, like not just to be like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna be super thug or this or that or yeah. no. Like we sometimes coming from where you come from, you got to work just as hard or harder than somebody from a major city. Is yeah. what we're saying, and especially you being, you know, right. a minority, a black yeah. male, you got to work even even that much harder. Right, because you know it's crazy. Because sometimes if you fill out an application, your name might be different. Your name's unpronounceable to some people, yeah. they're not going to hire you. Man, yeah. We're like, what is this? What am I doing? Like, instead of just looking at the person as individual. And it's crazy. So many things play a part. Like your hair, which is gay. And some people say that. It's, it's oh, be who you are. Whether you're yeah. straight, gay, transgender, black, honor, white, Honor yellow. your incarnation, man. Be who you are. Right, be who, who you are. are. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like I'm bald-headed. He has flowing <laughs> locks. You know? Yeah. He's a strapping young lad. Oh, stop. Anyway, <laughs> you know, let's, 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 round, let's round third here. A couple questions. What do you, you know, <clears throat> what, who, however, take this however you want. What do you want to be when you grow up? A superhero. Oh, you already are that. Uh, I'll that's my dude, <laughs> I'll man. say that. Uh, let's see. I want to be an uh, ambassador to all people, whether you, no matter what walks of life you come from or what you look like, what your sexual orientation is. I just, 
I don't care. I just want to accept people like Jesus Christ accepted people. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you believe in Jesus Christ or not, that's on you. But I don't want to pass judgment on anybody. The best way mm -hmm. I can put it. Like, because I know what it is to be looked at and be viewed as less than yeah. human or different. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it, dude. Well, thank you there, um, sir. And I guess the last question. If you had if you had to record this, you know, and like... Uh, oh, we could wrap it. <laughs> now, if, no, <laughs> well, my point, if you had to record, well, this is recorded, but if you had to, like, I don't know, I always think like a sci fi. Uh, oh. Like, I, I think like a. Look at this guy. Let me finish my thought. Yeah, my I, like a, like a sci fi uh, scene in, in, a, in a, a movie, a, a scene in a sci fi movie where, like, say, you're. you're <laughs> have you ever seen the movie Interstellar? Yes. Okay, so you know the scene where. Matthew McConaughey is like looking at his kids growing up when yeah. he's been out in space for however many years. Like if you had to sit down in front of a camera and give the all of humanity, every human being that has ever existed or every human being that will ever exist in the future and all the species, if you had to give them your number one piece of wisdom or you could take, frame it like this, you know, the young version of you, that 20-year-old version of you, or however you want to take this question, this you, 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 what would be that number one piece of wise advice and number one piece of wisdom you would give well we're going to take it back to elementary with this one the golden rule yeah. treat others how you want to be treated mm. treat others how you want them to treat your family your friends and just be kind man like you don't just just because you're being kind doesn't mean you're a pushover you know just be true to you and to everyone in your circle or everyone that's going to come into your circle. Mm. That's the best way I could put it. Like, uh, that's the best way. That's the only thing I can really say. I don't have any, and I don't have a, a definition for it or a, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. I don't, have, I was going to well, say, help me out there, but. <laughs> but. No, but it's called the golden rule for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter the spiritual practice, the religion. If you look at it, at them all, a through line, you know, the spine of every single one is that. Yeah. Treating people how you want to be treated, no matter what. But the problem is everybody just gets so divisive over the method, over, well, I'm a Hindu, I'm a Jew, I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm, I'm white supremacist, I'm this, I'm that. You know, we all look at it as like, I shouldn't lump white supremacy in there, but to some people that is a religion. My whole thing is this, though, my, my, about that, not yeah, to cut you off. Yeah. If you believe in, uh, if you read the Bible or if you read the Quran or if you read, I don't know what the, I don't think they have a book for uh, Buddhism or Hinduism, but it doesn't say anything about hate. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it doesn't say hate your neighbor. Right. right. It says love yeah. thy neighbor. Yeah. Like, but people Christ just loves it. the yep. church. Right. For and, their own gain. Exactly. So, 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 yeah, you're absolutely right. All Every single religion has the same thing. Let's treat everyone how you want yeah. to, how you would be treated. And what that speaks to, guys, is you are everyone, right? Everyone is you. You know, that we're all souls. We are all connected. We're all, all spirit. Like, we're, we're all spirit all, beings trying to be human. I agree. There's a really good uh, short story called The Egg. You never read it. It's really good. Where I checked it out. Yeah, look it up, guys. It's basically a guy dies and he goes to heaven and leaves like greasy is right now. Uh, <laughs> should just bring a box of tissues, put it right here. Uh, he he dies and he he meets God and basically God says that he's every being that has ever existed will exist. You know, and I think that's important. I, and I try to view life like that. You know, as I get older, to me, you know, I try to. And sometimes, God, is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it tough to view people, especially those those that we talked about, hey, those, there are some people that it's just, man, is it, are they me? Is it, can I really give them love? Can I really, you know, treat them with love and respect? And to, they're like the ultimate work that you need to do. It, what, you know what I mean? It shows you what you need to work on in yourself. Right. Like, and I know, I, I've mentioned this before, uh, but, uh, you know, spiritual teacher I've looked up to, Ram Das, he says... That uh, he had, I think it was George Bush was like on his, you know, he was like his guru. And then like George Bush, you know, on a picture frame where he would sit and, and meditate and worship, you know, because he hated George Bush. Right. So it was basically, that was his guru, that was his teacher teaching him how to, you know, how, how to have understanding 
towards all beings no matter right. what. You know, look, try to understand that there's a... Like, there's a somewhere deep inside there, there's a soul. No matter, you know what I mean? <laughs> somewhere in there, there's a soul. And how do we honor that? I guess, you know, like you said, man, the golden rule. I love it, dude. And I, I think if we all followed that more strictly, if we all adhered to that, and yeah, we're human, so we will slip, we'll fall. But if we follow that, if we... We'd be better off. We would completely have a, a more holistic, kind, loving, empathetic, compassionate, environment, uh, wholesome society. society. Absolutely. And you know what, though? Not to cut you off, my brother. I know some people could probably go to, I don't know, YouTube and see if this may be up. And I'm like, why are these guys sitting here talking? They look nothing alike. They come from two different uh, walks of life. Actually... We're more in sync than you think. Well, I like <laughs> you know I've saying? never heard it put that way. Well, yeah. I'm, it's true. I like. Well, I always say we, we as human beings, we're more alike than we are different. Yeah. Think about that. Right, because think about it. The more we try to get to understand each other, to be friends with each other, to help each other, the better off society would be. Shit, I don't care if you're green, purple. Gold, if you're Thanos, right, Hulk. with that chin, <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter, man. Like I said, like the better we are understanding each other, the better we are uh, doing good in our society. Like for example, you got people that just signal out certain individuals because of what they believe in, what they look like, what they uh, their orientation. Like I got gay cousins, I love them to death. I don't look at them different. You know what I'm saying? I have white cousins. I have aunts, biracial. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah. If it was, if that was the case, we all look one color. You know, it's just such a big deal. You know, like, we got to do better, man. Yeah. I, I want to read real quick a, a, a poem from Maya Angelou. Oh, the go human, for, the human okay. family. I got to take a swig of this water. Because this remind that this is basically exactly what we've been talking about for the last you know five minutes or so. So, um, she says, I note the obvious differences in the human family. Some of us are serious. Some thrive on comedy. Some declare their lives are lived in true profundity. And others claim they really live the true reality. The variety of our skin colors can confuse, bemuse, delight, brown and pink and beige and purple, tan and blue and white. I've sailed upon the seven seas and stopped in every land. I've seen the wonders of the world, not yet one common man. I know 10,000 women called Jane and Mary Jane, but I've not seen any two who really were the same. Mirror twins are different, although their, future, although their features jibe, and lovers think quite different thoughts while lying side by side. Hmm. We love and lose in China, we weep in England's moors, and laugh and moan in Guinea, and thrive on Spanish shores. We seek success in Finland, and are born and die in Maine. In minor ways we differ, and major we're the same. I note the obvious differences between each sort and type. But we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. Right? So that's it, dude. Golden rule, because we're all we're all human, yeah. brother. And guess what, man? I love you, and I thank you for being on my podcast, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and where can the, the people check you out, Greasy, if they want to keep up with you? Uh, you can catch me on Instagram, dgreasy400. You can catch me on Facebook. Uh, I have a Dini Jomo uh, Gamaliel Gamba. That's my uh, African name. It means burning spear and something else. Love it. Uh, or you could just email me, dgreasy60 at gmail.com. Or I'm going to take it old school, dgreasy at hotmail.com. Ooh, hot, the hotmail. I had that forever. Oh, God, that was the but thing. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, but yeah. no, uh, you know, you, cool. we got to get back definitely do right some on. more flicks that yeah, get too, man. Absolutely. And check us out, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, obviously YouTube, Anchor. Um, and I want to have you back again. At, I'm at coming, some point, man. I brother. got you. We'll talk bro. about because yeah. we've only this is what we've done, guys. We just scratched that surface. There's so much <laughs> more to learn about this right. beautiful, beautiful human. This my right brother, here. right here, man. Flowing locks. All right.
So right. thanks for coming on, brother. No problem, we'll man. Anytime, man. I'll be right. back, people. All right, guys. We love you, and we'll see you later. All right, we're going to go because we just want to go far. <laughs>